Hello, and welcome to the second video. Um, this is some integrals preliminary calculus information. Um, this video will be discussing the real line, or the real number line. Um, and to start off with that, I think you should remember, so I'll just say recall, and this is how I'll normally um, specify information that you should have already seen before at some point. So recall a line is a straight edge that extends forever extends forever in two directions so let's let's say in two parallel I think that's how you spell parallel directions Um, this is a very simple, um, probably oversimple definition of a line, but I think you, you probably just recall seeing that picture of a, a straight little segment with two little arrowheads at either end. And what that means is the straight curve, that, or it's not a curve, it's just a straight edge that goes on forever to the right and for on ever to the left. Um, but there's no reason why it can't be up and down or some weird sort of diagonal. Um, however, it's just usually easier for us to draw the real number line as this horizontal line, just because in, in books we normally read left to right, so we normally want to represent this line horizontally. And we'll label our real number line with this double stroke R for the reals. But what makes this the real number line is when we start identifying points on the line as real numbers. So the real number line is just a line. So the real line is a line where we've identified identified just meaning like tagged. We we've we associate points to uh, oops points on the line uh, with real numbers. And it's not just any specific order. So let, let me say with real with um, where we've identified points on the line with real numbers in their order. And I'll explain what their order is a little bit next time. However, for now, it should make sense that when I say, um, if I, I take this point, which I'll just identify as a tick mark, and I'll say that's zero. All I mean is that this point is identified to the number zero. And if I move over to the right a little bit and identify this point as number one, that, that I've now created a kind of direction that the number should take. So if I add 1 to the right, say plus 1, let's say I, I need a plus 1 again, and I should fix that to be the same distance. So 0 should be going to 1 the same way that 1 should be going to 2 on this line, and then so on. So the next one, the next tick mark should be 3. And I could also go to the left. I could kind of do a minus 1 this way. It should be negative one, and so on. So, this is essentially what the real number line is. This this picture describes how we think about the real number line. It's this uh, it's this geometric line where we've identified points on the line with real numbers. Okay. So let's look at not really some examples since oops, since the real number line is a sort of unique entity we can think about where numbers fall on this line so let's say 0 1 2 3 and 4 let's just take that for our um, example here so question
where is the square root of 2? So let's think about what that means. And let me just use some color so it's not so monotone. So the square root of 2 is approximately 1.4142135, I think, yeah, maybe 6. That should be enough. There's more digits, but let's just leave it at that. So where is the square root of 2? Well, if it's about 1.41, it should be between 1 and 2. And it should be close to 1 and a half, but a little bit to the left. So let's just drop it right there. So I'm going to say that is the square root of 2. All right. So now, uh, let's say where is, uh, let's do a better example. So let's say where is pi? And let's pick a nice color for pi, maybe this orange. So pi is approximately 3.1415926.5. I guess that's enough digits. So pi should be 3.14 something. So that means it's between 3 and 4, but it's pretty close to 3. It's just a little bit after 3. So let's say it's about here. So that's where pi is. And let's just do one more. So where is E on this real line? we we'll use a green for that. So E is approximately 2.718281818. Uh, I guess that's enough digits as well. It's 2.7 something. So that means it's between 2 and 3, and it's, let's say, pretty close to 3, but it's about halfway between 2 and a half and 3. So let's say it's about here. It's about, oops, let me make that clear, it's E. So it's a, almost 3 quarters of the way between 2 and 3. So let's see. What happens if I change the scale, though? So let's say I take the same, the same length, basically, of a line, except now I say this is 0, this is, oops, let's say this is 5, this is 10, 25, 15, 20, and so on. So now let's see, where is the square root of 2 on this line? Well, all of this fits into this tiny little window right here. So it's going to be between 1 and 2 again, but that's going to be such a small little distinction, I think it'll be right about here. Square root of 2 is going to be between 1 and 2, which should be about there. Pi is going to be between 3 and 4, which should be maybe around here somewhere, closer to 3. So that'll be pi. And let's say E should be almost 3, but between 2 and 3. So I'd say E is right about there. So you can see when we shrink the scale, when we say instead of these unit ticks, being one real number apart, they're five real numbers apart, all of a sudden it condenses all of this, let's see, it condenses this into a much smaller window. All right. However, that, that's useful sometimes. So when I make, when I want to tell the difference between square root of, um, square root of 2, e, and pi, it's much easier to tell the difference in the top one. However, if I wanted to say, distinguish between, let's, let's add another number here. So where is, oh, I don't know. Let's say, let's say 5 pi, right? So where is 5 times pi? Right, so that should be, We'll do that in like a purple or something. That's not purple. 
that's pi. Okay, so five times pi is approximately um, two times pi. I'm sorry, ten times pi is thirty-one divided by two. So it's about something between fifteen and sixteen. So it's fifteen point something or other. So it should be right about here. Let's say with a little bit of accuracy. Um, if we wanted to make it more accurate, I could actually calculate what this number is and, and plot it more precisely. But for now, it's good enough to see that it's about 15 point something. And what I can then tell is that 5 pi is much larger than pi, e, and root 2. However, I couldn't tell that on this graph, on this first real number line, because I can't even plot it. It's way too far to the right. So the scope of this line, how I draw it, gives me an advantage in some cases. So I have to pick what my designating intervals are. These, these, you can think of these as intervals, which I'll also explain later, but all I'm doing is saying here's where 0 is, here's where 1 is, here's where 2 is. Whereas I can say here's where 0 is, this, you know, the next tick mark is going to be 5, then 10, 15, 20, and so on. So now, Play, play around with this and, and try and figure out if you can... Let me see if I can draw a straight line again. See if you can figure out, well, uh, let's see, if this is negative 2 pi, if this is 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, and so on, where would the same numbers be? Or if the scale was, say, much, much larger. So let's say this is 0, this is 100, this is 200, this is negative 100. Where would all of these numbers be? So play around with that, try and get used to it. Um, th this, this is a pretty simple concept, so I won't spend too much time explaining it, but it's definitely worth investigating to build a good visual intuition for the real numbers, um, especially later when we start thinking about order. So that'll be all for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.